I will show you an amazing Sudoku shortcut that will make your jaw drop to the floor. And with that, it's solving time. So first, get some easy solves out of the way. You might notice with these two fours in rows five and six, and this four in column seven, the only place for a four here in block six is right there. And then with these two fives, you can solve for a five right here. Greetings, friend. I want to thank Aaron for this wonderfully creative puzzle because it allows you to use an amazing shortcut that you can use over and over again on very hard puzzles. And now the question of the day. When a puzzle gets tough, do you, do you usually push through or do you set it aside for later? For me, I will usually set aside after a certain time limit after about an hour or so, and then try again the next day if I think of something else to try with that puzzle. What about you? Please, please share in the comments and help me grow the internet's best Sudoku community. I answer every comment. And I want to show you this jaw-dropping shortcut. But first, you need to find all the digit restrictions from 1 to 9. So, if you look where the 1s can be, with these two 1s, there's only two places for a one in block three. So mark that and any other three by three block where a candidate is restricted to two possibilities. With these two ones, only two places for a one in block seven. Nothing else you can mark with the ones at this time. Move on to the twos. And you'll notice with this two cutting across row two, you have two places for a two in block two and they are a pointing pair, which means since they're in the same column, a two can't be anywhere else outside that block. You put a two here, here, then you'd have no place for a two in block two. And because of that, to go with this two, you now can solve for a two in block five. Then use these twos to solve for a two in block four. And then with these twos and this two, you can mark twos here in block one. Nothing else you can do with the twos at this time. Move on to the threes. You might notice with this three and that three, only place for a three in block six is right there, which allows you to mark for the threes in block five. And with these threes, now you can solve for a three in block nine. And that's it you can do with the threes. Notice how you only have a 7 and an 8 right here in column 7 to finish uh, the two remaining cells, so mark that. All right, after doing the 3s, move on to the 4s. You'll see with these two 4s and this 4, two places for a 4 in block 1. And then with these two 4s, two places for a 4 in block 9. Nothing else with the 4s. Move on to the 5s. This five cutting across row seven, two places for a five and block nine. And that's it with the fives, move on to the sixes. Okay, with the six in column seven and this six cutting across, two places for six and block three, nice. But that's it, move on to the sevens. Not getting a lot of other solves here. Let's see what you can do with the sevens. With these two sevens, Two places for seven in block eight, and with this seven and the seven here, two places for seven in block nine. You already marked the sevens here as part of that naked pair. All right, move on to the eights. And this will help your solving out a little bit if you find this. You will notice there aren't any eights except for this one as far as givens go. But with this eight coming in, and you have now kind of a point triple of eights, eights would, would be restricted right here. Unless you notice in this column, you got a one, two, four, five, six, nine. So you just need a three, seven, and an eight. Well, with the three and a seven there, you can actually solve that now for an eight. It's a naked single and gives you a three, seven naked pair in column five. So you find that it's gonna in, it speed up your solving a little bit quicker. Okay. After the eights, move on to the nines. 
with these two nines and this nine, you can solve for a nine in block eight. And then with this nine and the nine right there, you have a pointing pair of nines in block four. And you can put the nines there now in block six. Okay, next step after looking for digit restrictions one through nine, go back through if you had a few easy solves. See if there's anything else that you can get as far as easy solves go. What you might see with this five cutting across, since you put in the three, seven, and then the eight and the nine, you now have a pointing pair of fives in block eight. Three places for a five in block two, not gonna mark that. And then you can see with the six cutting across, you have two places for a six in block eight, but that is about it. That's it. Not gonna get any more easy solves. And so now it's time for that amazing shortcut. Whenever you're dealing with a handmade classic, you wanna ask yourself, what was the center's intent? And so Aaron called this mutant lobster, and you probably notice that this is kind of like one of the claws, and this is like the other claw for the lobster, and here's the body, and here's the tail from the givens. And they point up here into block one, which has no given digits. And so you gotta say, okay, he gives us this hint. He has the column and the row of digits kind of pointing here to row one, column one. You wanna be curious and go, what's going on in row one, column one? So what can this cell be? Well, it can't be a two, three, four, five, six, seven, or an eight. It can only be a one or a nine. If there's a way to eliminate one of those digits, then you can solve this cell. And so this is a nice little shortcut to use. You want to see where all the ones could be in this puzzle. You'll notice they could be here, here, there, right here, right there, and all of block one. And normally, I'd say not much here with the ones, but there's some neat stuff going on here. So ask yourself, if this was a one, what would happen? And let's put that uh, as a one right there. You would notice that all these cells couldn't be ones, right? Which would put a one right here. And then these cells, well, actually those could not be ones either, would not be ones. And so you'd force a one right here and eliminate ones from those cells. And you'd put a one right here. And so far it's like, okay, no big deal until you notice the contradiction. This would have to be a one. You eliminate both places for a one in block three. You can't put a one here, right? Because of this one and these ones. That would break the puzzle. So by using some simple coloring, you can see, hey, this can't be a one, it must be eliminated, and you can solve this for a nine. And now you're wondering, Timberlake, what is, how does the logic really work? That looks like a lot of guessing. Well, and I'll show you how the logic works. You have to notice the conjugate pairs that are in this puzzle. So conjugate pairs, when there's two possibilities for a candidate in a row, column, or block. You notice right here, a one's either here. If it's not here, it has to be there. So they form what's called a strong link. If this is false, is that this is not a one, this has to be a one. And then this one, with any of the ones in row two there, when there's more than two candidates, they form what's called a weak link. So if this is true, then this or any of these other cells could not be a one. And you go with this alternate inference chain of true and false or of strong and weak links, you can figure out the same thing I just showed you with coloring. So you have a strong link here because of the conjugate pair, a weak link to this one, strong link here because of the conjugate pair, weak link here, you see there's three possibilities, strong link here because there's only two possibilities, weak here because of all the possibilities and another strong link there. Basically, layman's terms, either this is a one, and anything that sees it can't be a one, including this cell. It's not a one. You put a one right there. This couldn't be a one. That'd have to be a one. This couldn't be a one. That would have to be a one. This couldn't be a one. You put a one right there. 
So either the one's right there, if it's not there, it has to be there due to this X chain. And so either way, you can eliminate the one from this cell. But you notice that coloring shortcut was a lot easier to find and use just by thinking what did the setter intend. All right, now check out the reward you get by figuring out what's in this cell right here. You know this can't be a one, it has to be a nine. Now see what the impact is on the row, column, and block. Since that's a nine, this can't be a nine anymore. This has to be your nine. And then with this nine and the nine right here, you can solve this cell now for a nine, displacing that six, displacing that one, and you can solve this cell for a five. And then with this nine, displace the nine right there, solve this cell for a nine. It gives you a nice six, eight naked pair right here. And then with this five, you can displace that five, solve this for a five, displace that seven. Now you get to take advantage of all those marks you put in, right? Displace the seven there, solve this for a seven, which means that has to be a three. And then you just have, looks like a four and an eight there with this eight. Here's your eight displacing that four. Okay, keep following the marks. With these two fours and this four, you can solve that cell for a four now. With this five, you can displace that five. Solve this for a five, displacing the six, allowing you to solve this cell now for a three. Hunt the marks, displace that three, solve this for a three. Look at all this benefit you get from finding that nice little shortcut. Full house here, eight of nine cells filled out. Just count them up, one, two. I don't see a three, it has to be right there. Same thing here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This must be an eight, leaves you with a nice one, six, naked pair right there. So as long as you keep finding and solving cells, continue with your solve. Okay, across here, you just need a six and an eight in row five, because there's six there, there's your eight. Here's your six, that's gonna be your eight. And now you just have, it looks like a one and a six here with the six. There's your six, there's your one. Awesome. Another full house. One, two, three, four, five, don't see a six. That's gotta be your six. Disambiguating the one and the six right there. Nice. And now with these sixes and these sixes, you can solve for a six right here. And you can see you just need a one and two in column three. With this one, that's your one displacing that two. Displace the two, solve for two right here. Nice. And then you can solve this cell now for a one. You just have, looks like a five and seven remaining in block two with this five. There's your five, there's gonna be your seven. Finish row one with a nice three. And you just have a one and an eight there with this one. That's your one, that's gonna be your eight with this four. Displace that four. Solve this for a four now. Finish up column one with an eight. Disambiguate the seven, eight right there. Follow the seven. You know this has to be a seven and your last digit's gonna be a five. Now, see if you can apply this secret shortcut to this next puzzle. Thank you so much for watching.